After watching this video, you're never ever going to need to write JavaScript again. That's not true, but it could be in the future. It's not right now, but maybe in the future it will be true. We're going to talk about how you can replace JavaScript right now with Python. Because no one likes JavaScript. That's a true statement. Everyone loves Python. That's also a true statement. So what we're going to do is just replace Python with JavaScript with a new project called PyScript. Let's jump right into it, shall we? Bam! Transition. PyScript lets you run JavaScript in your browser as you would HTML. Let's make a simple web page. Hello.html. Hello. Now we need to install PyScript. It's as simple as copying these two lines from the PyScript website. You just copy these. This is the, the JavaScript library. It is actually WebAssembly on the back end. And their CSS to make it look pretty. There we are. Done. Put that in our head. Head. Paste. Head. Just add some formatting. Whoa, no indentations, eh? I'm a cool guy. There we are. Right. We have now installed the library. That's all it needs. Um, so that will print hello just as usual, HTML. Let's let's do some simple Python to replace some JavaScript. So let's display the current date and time. So to write Python, you need to use the PyScript tag. Like that. Now that will whatever we write in there has to be Python and it will get run as Python. So we can import libraries. So I'm importing the date time library from in Python. And now I'm going to write some code to print the current data. Right, there we are. So this will print the current day time. So it works a bit like Streamlit, whereas if you just declare a variable, it will just print it, thankfully. So to run this, you actually need to use a, a proper Python web server. No, a, a proper, you need to use a proper web server to run this. So you, you can't just use, just browse to it like you would with JavaScript. So we need to use, let's just use the python-mhtp.server, which is a very simple web server. Now we can open this up, go to our browser here. Here's our directory, we click hello.html. Loading runtime, it is very slow, and there we are, it's printed the current date. So, you notice how long this takes to load, right? This takes forever to load to do a really simple thing. That's the bad thing about PyScript is currently it does take forever to run things, so it's not actually practical for anything, but it is really cool, and in the future, hopefully, it will replace many things. Where are we now? I shall hide that using the magic of i3. Oh, oh it's not hidden. It's hidden now. So it's a bit like the, the Python repel using this, and a bit like Streamlit. So we can actually include a repel in this website if we want. PyScript does that feature, so you can test any Python feature you want online, or even just run a full Python shell. So use the py repel tag for that. I'll make it a bit bigger. We have to call it something. id equals my repel. Like that. Uh, auto generate, generate equals true because we always want it there, and that's it. Now, if I reload this page, look, it has the date time. We also have a full on Python thing. Ah. Uh, run. There we go. Very cool. Uh, and we can do whatever we want there. Let's just let's just show something off. Let's do a for loop. Run that. There we go. So that prints a hundred times. Starts at zero, prints a hundred times. So currently this is not really use useful. We can't get any user input. We can just run script, which is cool, but we want the user to interact with our software. Let's just delete this now. Delete this, delete all this. It's gone, gone. So first let's create an input box that the user can type things into. Right, this is an input box for the user to type into. Note the ID, that's important here. Now we need a button for the user to press. So we've got a button now. Note this bit here, pys.onclick, so pyscript.onclick. So when we click this, it will run the print word function. Now, so all this is gonna do, we're gonna type something in and press it and Python will print the word for us. It's not cool, but it shows that we can read inputs, which is very important. So we need a place for the output to go once we eventually print it. All right, there we are. And now the Py script, now the part you've all been waiting for. This is just a simple Python script. We call it the same thing that we did the, the on click. So we, we call it this value here, print word. Um, we want args and we need we just need to specify these, otherwise it won't work. Args and keyword arguments. And the only thing, my vim currently does not syntax highlight like this. I could probably mod it in, or there's probably also a plugin for it now, but anyway. Text equals element. This is a bit like JavaScript here. So if you've written any JavaScript, you'll be kind of familiar. This is like document dot query selector stuff. Uh, element, so we find the test input 
element. So this gets the this element here and then gets the value of it. So we can do element.value. So text is whatever value we've put in, in this input box, okay? And then element test output. So this here says our test output div, which we've just, the element with the ID test output, which is this div here. I'm pointing at it, but I will use my cursor. And the inner text of that just be the text, which is, which is what we've typed in here, okay? Not very cool, but shows some important features. Now we close our PyScript tag. We don't want that K there. And let's try it. Refresh. So we've got an input box here. You can't actually see it unless I click on it. But let's zoom in. So let's print this. OK. It prints this. Very cool. We now can pass the user input to an arbitrary Python script. Yes. User input acquired. Let's just do make it slightly more interesting. Do the same thing as we did before. Let's start it at one this time to avoid confusion. Let's change this to an f string f text i. So this will say the text and then the amount of time it's been printed. Need to fix the indentation there. Refresh. Loading the runtime. Ah, oh, we've got an error here. I have not closed my f string. There we are. Fix that. So it still does give values here. Uh, let's hope that works. That does not work. I thought that would be correct. There we are. Fix our indentation. There we go. Hello. And then we say, how many times? Question mark. 99 times. Okay. There is a, what, what type of bug do you call this? This is a bug. Ah, so this does change it, but it doesn't add it to, is this like a semantic error? Let's quickly check that. Type, types of programming errors. I guess it's a logic error, whatever. So this was because I didn't set it. I, I also wrote a new file. So this should work now. How many times? How many times? There we go, look at that. So you see, once it's loaded, it's actually quite fast. So it just takes a while to load the runtime. Uh, this is because it's like WebAssembly and it's new, not optimized yet, yada, yada, yada. Next example, we can load external libraries. This can be really powerful if you've done like data science and used NumPy and Matplotlib and all that jazz. Um, machine learning libraries, all that stuff. Any Python library you can load. So to do that, I'll just delete all this. Yeah, why not delete all this? Keep the hello there, because that's nice. Right, and then we can go in our head tag here, pi env. Right, and then you can just say, I want to load these packages, numpy and matplotlib, like this. Very easy, fix that, there we are. Right, so now that'll load numpy and matplotlib. Right, a, a, a library for advanced maths and a library to plot things. Let's just do a very simple example to show this off. And then we just, these are just random numbers for our x and y coordinates and we're just gonna plot them. And then display it and close it. Again, it displays it like a repo. Let's check, refresh. Loading runtime, creates a bit longer because we're loading external libraries, okay. And but there we go, so this is a, a thousand random points plotted. Just to show off that you can import things. You can also import like any so we can store that print word thing, we can store that in an external function and import it in a similar way. So yeah, this is just scratching the surface of what PyScript can do. Obviously you can basically do whatever you want in Python on the web now. People are already using it to do cool things, but again, it's not a replacement for JavaScript, at least not at the moment because of how long it takes to run. That, and that's because it, it's all compiles down to WebAssembly and all that. Um, like if we look in the, the console here, like it has to do all this, <laughs> like, so. It has to do all that to load. Um, I can't really tell you what that's doing. I'm not smart enough to understand WebAssembly, but it does a bunch of stuff. It's cool. Yeah, so I'm just scratching the surface of what you can do. There's a whole list of examples that I've put in the description, and there's also I've also put a link to a GitHub repo with all these examples in that I've just done. So please check that out. Sorry for lack of videos. I've, I've moved around again. We've got another new camera angle. I've got a new PC now. My old one broke. Ten years I had it. Uh, it had a GTX 760 in, so that's died now. So I bought a new one, I built it. It took me ages to do because I haven't built a new PC in ages. It's got water cooling, which I was scared about. Um, but it's all fine now, it's all wonderful. It's got a 3060 in it, so I can mine my vert coins just fine. Um, yeah, 
more videos coming. Like, comment, subscribe.